Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, we're gonna go through the four new Surface devices Microsoft announced at their September 2023 event. If you watch the event, you would have actually only seen two devices that were announced, which was the Surface Laptop Studio 2 and the Surface Laptop Go 3. But if you jump on the business side, there's actually two more devices, the Surface Hub 3 and the Surface Go 4. The Surface Go 3 is still in market for consumers, but the Surface Go 4 is available now for business users. In this video, we're gonna go through what's changed, what stays the same, and what I'm most excited about as well. So let's start with the product I am most excited about, which is the Surface Laptop Studio 2. Here in front of me, I have my original Surface Laptop 1, which I love as a device. It turns from a tablet into a really powerful desktop. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but that's because it's got the dedicated graphics card. And when this device was announced, I had one major gripe with it, which was the processor at the time. This device shipped with an i5 or an i7 11th gen, and those were only quad core processors, which in my opinion, when everyone was coming out with six, eight, even 12 core processors, were a little underpowered compared to the competition. In terms of the body, the uh, we're gonna touch more on the processor in a second, but I just wanna talk about what physically has changed as well. This one here only has two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side of it, and of course, the Surface Connect and audio jack on the other side. It was missing a few ports and people did notice this. What they have done is they've returned the USB-A as well as keeping the two Thunderbolt 4 ports and they've also added a micro SD card on the right hand side. Really happy about all of these changes, but for someone like myself, I would have preferred a full size SD card, but I think Microsoft adding more ports, especially that USB-A is a really big win for creators and enthusiasts. More importantly though, let's look at the internals of this device and this is where things get really, really interesting. The body and the design are almost identical aside from those extra ports, but Microsoft has jumped from the 11th gen processors up to the 13th, which in itself is a decent jump. Let's jump on the Intel website now and we can see the massive performance gains to expect with the new processor. So on the left-hand side here, we have the original i7, which was the 11300H. And on the right hand side, we have the new processor in this uh, Laptop Studio 2, which is the i7-13800H. If we scroll down, the first thing you'll notice is that it has jumped from the 10 nanometer process over to the seven, uh, which means we can actually put more processors now in the, or more cores, I should say, uh, in the same package. So let's scroll down and have a look at the CPU specs. The original only shipped with a quad core with eight threads. And we have a massive jump now with a total of 14 cores, six performance and eight efficiency. So more than 10 extra cores in the generational jump. And if we look at the number of threads, it's gone from a total of eight threads all the way to 20. So more than double the amount of threads on the processor. I'm really excited about this because it just means the Laptop Studio 2 is uh, capable of much more in terms of raw performance and processing power. If we look at the max uh, frequency on this chip, it also goes over five gigahertz to 5.2, opposed to the Surface Laptop 1, which was only 4.8. One thing to note here is the manufacturers can actually limit and reduce the amount of uh, wattage or max frequency of the device. So whether or not the Laptop Studio 2 hits that 5.2 or not is yet to be seen. But even still, what we're getting is a massive generational jump in raw performance on the Laptop Studio 2. The other thing that I'm really excited about on the Laptop Studio 2, if we go over to the Microsoft website, is the fact that it also gets this Intel Gen 3 AI processor. If you haven't seen already, there is something called AI Studio FX, which takes a lot of the video processing from calls like face tracking, background blur, eye adjustments, all that sort of stuff, takes it off the processor and puts it on the AI module, which means the processor doesn't run as hot, doesn't run as heavy, because the video focusing is actually done on the AI processor and not the CPU. I've got a full video on AI Studio Effects that I'll link down below if you wanna check that out in, you know, after watching this video. One other thing that I'd call out on the Surface Laptop Studio 2 is that it no longer ships with an i5 model. They only have the i7, so you can only get the performance models in the Surface Laptop Studio. There's no more i5 with integrated graphics. It's all i7s. Another big change with the Surface Laptop Studio is, of course, that performance where you can actually get double the RAM now. The Laptop Studio 1, you could get either 16 or a max of 32 gigs of RAM, which is now doubled to uh, 16, 32, or 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So you're not only getting a massive jump in CPU performance, you're getting up to double the RAM as well. 
In terms of graphics, you've got a really big change as well. You can still get the base model with your Intel Iris built-in graphics. So you're getting that great processor, but you're only getting Intel built-in graphics. Or you can actually jump up to a six or eight gig RTX 4050 or 4060. The original Surface Laptop Studio One only had a four gig uh, graphics card, but now you can get it with either six or eight gigs. And for the professionals out there, you can actually get the RTX uh, 2000 with eight gigs of VRAM as well. The next device Microsoft announced at their September 2023 event was the Surface Laptop Go 3, which hasn't really changed much in terms of the design and the body. It's still the same 12.4 inch screen, but they have upgraded the processor from the 11th gen to the 12th gen i5 and made a few changes with the amount of storage you can get. So if we jump and I'm on the business side here, um, but you can get an either eight or 16 gigs of RAM. Um, and now you have a few options when it comes to the storage. You can get a 128 gig universal flash storage, which is a lower powered version of an eMMC card, which is faster, but it also uh, draws less power. Or you can choose to get a 256 or even a 512 option for the business SKUs in an SSD. The main changes here are the fact that they've gone from 11th to a 12th gen processor, and then they've kept the rest of the body the same. I love the Surface Laptop Go 3. It is a great portable little device, and this is a nice incremental upgrade year on year. So now let's get into the two devices that they actually didn't talk about in this announcement, but they did release online. Let's jump back on the computer here because I'm going to show you where you can find these devices if you want to look at them for yourself. So we're going to go onto the Microsoft website and then we're going to go over to the Surface section. Before I jump over to that though, this is the standard Microsoft.com website where it shows two items in the uh, cassette here. You've got the Surface Laptop Studio 2 and then we can scroll and you've got the Surface Laptop Go 3. They're the two consumer devices they announced. If you go over to the Surface section though at the top, and then select on computers for business. Actually, let's drop this down here. You see under computers, you've got two options that say new, Laptop Studio 2 and Laptop Go 3. If we go computers for business though, you actually see three sections here that say Surface Go 4, which means that they've announced the new Go 4, but only for business users at the moment. And then you have, of course, the Studio 2 and the Go 3. So let's jump into the Surface Go 4 for business right now. So when you go into the For Business website, you actually get the little badge here that says new uh, because this is a new device, but it's only announced for business users right now. Uh, let's jump over into the tech specs, but as you can see from the video here, um, the device looks the exact same as the Surface Go 3. So externally, it looks almost identical. It uses the same keyboard, kickstand, uh, and of course the same pen, but let's go and see what has changed. So the first thing that has changed is they've jumped to the Intel processor, the N200, uh, where you no longer have two options of an Intel Pentium or an Intel uh, Celeron. It is now just the Intel processor N200. And I believe they were saying this gets up to 80% more uh, performance over the last year's generation, which is huge. Uh, it also gets eight gigs of RAM. So there's no more four gig option, uh, at least for the business side. And then storage has gone completely to the uh, universal flash storage. Previously, you could either get an eMMC or an SSD. The universal flash so uh, storage sits nicely in between a U, uh, an eMMC and a SSD in that it draws less power and it's less power hungry than an eMMC, but it's also faster. And you have three options here in terms of a 64, a 128, and a 256 gig UFC UFS drive. One thing to note about the new Surface Go 4 for business, um, because it is the for business model, it either ships with Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. You can't get it with the home edition, uh, but I actually think that's a good thing because this device is targeted for businesses. One downside about it right now is that there is actually no LTE option. So if you want a Surface Go 4 with LTE, so cellular capabilities, you don't have that right now. You'd have to roll back to a Surface Go 3 with LTE. Uh, I think this is a great portable device. Um, I'm actually really impressed with the fact that they can get up to 80% more performance in the same package with the Surface Go 4. Uh, and this really is right now only a business focused device. Whether this will shift into the, into the consumer space later on, not sure, but excited to find out. And now let's jump over to the final change or the final device Microsoft announced in their September 2023 event, which is the Surface Hub 3. 
So on their website here, I've just scrolled to the top. If we go under the devices section and scroll down to small and large screens, you see there actually is no option that says new Surface Hub 3. It's still called the Surface Hub 2S. If you don't know, the Surface Hub is a collaborative device that is designed for Microsoft Teams, which is about creating a hybrid work environment. But if we go onto the website and we select on Surface Hub 2 here, it now shows us coming soon is the Surface Hub 3. What we can see here is the 85 inch Surface Hub 3. Um, and if we scroll down, you'll also see there is the 50.5 inch version as well. The biggest difference here is that with the Surface Hub 3, you actually can keep the original body of Surface Hub 2S, but you get to change and replace the cartridge at the back, which will give us a supposedly more powerful device. There's not a lot of information on this compute unit just yet, but it is really cool to see that Microsoft is still investing in the Surface Hub uh, product range. The biggest change as well, which they announced maybe about a year ago, is that the operating system is changing in 2025, but you can of course upgrade to the new OS before then. The Surface Hub 3 was originally running on a version called Windows 10 Teams, which is being um, made end of life in 2025, and is, is converting into a full Microsoft Teams room solution on Windows, which gives you uh, a range of improvements in terms of performance and collaboration options. And I'm really excited to see this device. On the website here, it still says coming soon. There's not a lot of information that we know right now, uh, but I think the Surface Hub has been an amazing device since it was first announced in 2015. And the fact that Microsoft continues to invest in it is a really, in my opinion, uh, is really quite cool. So let's actually see if there's much that we can learn about the Surface Hub right now from their website. Not really, but if we go and actually search up Surface Hub 3 on the tech community, uh, this will actually bring you to the Surface Hub 3 announce site, which I'll link in the description down below for you, if you want to do small reading on what changes with the Hub 3. So you can see here, and this is a great video with um, Frank and Sonia introducing the Hub, uh, but what we're gonna do is scroll down and look at some of the photos here. What you can see here is that the Hub can actually, in the uh, OS change, in the cartridge change, go from portrait to landscape mode with the 50 inch where you can rotate it, which is great when you wanna use it in different uh, scenarios. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, this is actually what I'm really excited about, which is the easy transition and support. So the Surface Hub 2S can upgrade to the full Surface Hub 3 using the Surface Hub 3 pack. What you can see here is actually the compute module. Can we zoom in on that? Not too much, so that's okay. But what you can see here is actually the compute module um, of the Surface Hub, where at some point we'll be able to pull that out and then pop in a new cartridge, um, which will allow us to easily upgrade to the Surface Hub 3. Really excited to see more on this when it comes out. Um, but for now, I think, well, I'm just excited to wait to see what comes out with the Surface Hub 3. And there you have it. Those are the four devices Microsoft Surface announced in their 2023 event. Let me know which device you're most excited about in the comment section down below. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge the ways your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.